Let's just start with a bit of, um, of squad bits and pieces in terms of from midweek to weekend, similar si type of squad or anybody back or, or missing? Um, Elkin's got a chance. Um, he's on the, been on the grass now for the last week or so. Um, been exposed to a bit of team, team training this week. Um, so he's certainly back in contention. We've got to tick a few final boxes because he's had a hard session today. And the only real pain he's been getting throughout his rehab time has been a bit of pain in his calf when jumping. Um, and as I said, you've got to jump and hit the ball. So um, we've just got to make sure he comes through today and tomorrow, OK, and then he's in contention. Um, the rest of it, I expect to look similar to what it did. Uh, Harvey Vale's done a little bit more. Um, coughing up some horrendous stuff, um, but in a better shape than he was previously. So same thing for, for him, really, as long as he doesn't react to his first exposure to team training, which was today, um, he might be involved. And, and both those are young players, I guess, given the circumstance at the moment, are you having to think about whether it's young or old, but the ability to deal with the situation that you're in? Yeah, pressure's pressure. Um, and young players probably haven't experienced it the way more experienced pros have. Um, but people deal with it in different ways and sometimes the naivety of youth can help you. Um, but probably as a manager, you, you trust will always go to the ones who've been through difficult times before. Um, not to say I'm not looking forward to seeing Harvey or having Elkin back at the weekend, um, but you always rely on your trusted core of probably senior group uh, or senior players at the start of the season or at any stage of, of planning. Um, so those are the ones you really look to more than anyone else. But sometimes the younger ones surprise you. Um, I think you probably saw that with, with Reading, that the way they... They play and go about their game. Um, there's a real enthusiasm and it's a youthful nature about it. So it's always about getting the right balance. Um, and it's certainly something we're intending to do next season. But in the meantime, and the run we've been on, um, getting the right ones out there who can control their own emotions as much as the emotions of the game is, is vitally important. And, and actually, it, I don't think that's been the case with Reading throughout the whole season, but they've kind of come through the fire and, and come out the <laughs> other side of it, which is, is great when that happens. But when you're in the middle of it, it's probably not not so much of a help. Oh yeah, and, and sometimes you, you can't see the end, um, even more so where it's just continued setback and result and then the, the headlines have no, go no goals for us for a period of time. Um, it feels like Groundhog Day and a, a constant, but we're in control of that and we can change that, we can change it with our performances and the way we play and then the end outcome. And, and that's what you are judged on. Um, but we know difficult times in football, if you've been in it for long enough, they, they come and go um, and you come through it in a stronger position. Obviously, our situation is a little bit more unique because of what's going to happen towards the end of the season, what's gone towards the end of the season. And probably since uh, the FA Cup games on January onwards, it's been a real real slog to, to get keep getting us where we, we need to be. Um, but we're still positive going into the last four games, despite the feeling around around the club and looking forward to it. Um, but in those games, you want to keep that strength which you go into it with. Um, Tuesday night, we didn't give ourselves a chance with the start and all of a sudden the start materialises into or, or goes into a goal against and then another goal against. And then at half time, you're thinking this is a, a poor feel of the air and a poor result. Mm. So do you, I mean, with, with the goals, do you, everybody knows about it. Do you talk about it with the players or is it something you just get on with your things and, and try and, and not paper over it, but, but not make too big a deal of it? Oh, of course you talk about it. You've got to face up to it. You can't hide away from it and ignore the fact that we're not putting the ball in the, the back of the net. Um, we have created chances in the last two games. We, we showed 10 minute clips of the start to the second half so where we seem to have created our most chances, if that makes sense. Um, but confidence, of course, is a, a big factor. Um, but also the pressure of the games. And sometimes when you're behind or knowing that the, you know, the game's in a, an interesting position, um, just holds you back a little bit. Um, we've got to find a way of taking that pressure away. It's easy to talk about, so, so difficult to do. And I, I'm, you know, I'm not on the pitch trying to do it. Um, the players are trying to do that. I've, I've got so much respect for what they're trying to do. Just the end isn't quite happening at the moment, but we believe it will do and we believe it will change. So do you talk about the psychology of it, about trying to, to just play the ball as you know you see a pass a shot whatever it is or do, yeah. you, do you by talking about it too much <laughs> yeah. do you make it worse well you can do but i don't think scott sinclair can do much more than what he did on tuesday That's, you put that down to fantastic defending and um, even chrissy martin at the weekend um, even brandon's chance some good goalkeeping actions um, you know we, we go back a little bit of time but when we're hitting the post and missing penalties then then all of a sudden a run like that just builds and builds and builds on top of what happens um, you need a little bit of luck you probably need one to go off to on the backside i keep saying about a set piece output because if there's anything you can really practice certain moments in the game and replicate that, it's set pieces. And we always have good delivery. You know, Anthony or Brandon or Giovanni, whoever's on the pitch, generally puts the ball where we want it. We just don't quite 
meet it with that conviction that I believe I'm <laughs> going to score. In that instance, I believe one set piece for one of our young defenders will go on to then becoming a, a real profile in the box, but we're just not quite there yet. Yeah, and, and it's not relatively that long ago. You think about someone like Orient away. If you get your noses in front, if you can get that goal, yeah. then it just changes the whole feeling in a team. Yeah, and we have to refer back to some of the second half of the season there. And, Aaron Collins leaving it was the right thing and the right decision for all involved in relation to that. Um, but he, despite not having his goal scoring form up until January, he was involved in a lot of goal scoring actions and a lot of chances. Um, and also his legs top end of the pitch, and we've never really been able to replace that aspect. And that probably keeps a little bit more pressure on uh, the Chrissy Anthony combination, which has been our go to <laughs> so many times. Um, but when it continues to be a go to, sometimes opposition have a plan in relation to that. And when it doesn't quite materialise, um, then you need other ways to score a goal. I'm, I'm pleased with the way Luke Thomas has come back into the team and been involved in chances. Now we need the, the end bit of the goal to back that up. Yeah, and, and it is difficult, you know, the final whistle on, on Tuesday. It, it's not a nice atmosphere. Is, is that something you talk about with the players or can they can see it and hear it as much as anybody else? Yeah, but, you know, I, I was not pleased in any way on Tuesday, but rather. It was aimed at me as opposed to the players. Um, I, I do feel the group just needs to be deloaded of any pressure and expectation. They've probably had that too much throughout the course of this whole season, and it's, it has affected us at times. So, you know, managers a certain position at the football club, um, and I'm not the one kicking the ball, but obviously directing it from from the outsides. Um, so hopefully, maybe that just takes a little bit of pressure off the players. But then, game pressure you, you can't hide away from whether that's uh, Reading on a Tuesday night or Cheltenham this weekend or Bolton. Um, the, the game's always in the balance until a big moment doesn't go your way. Um, and then we're looking back at you know, missed opportunities or a mistake in terms of goal against. Um, and that just, like I say, changes your whole feel and your whole demeanour. Mm. Uh, how do you deal with it? Because it's not nice when, when you get anything targeted at you as an individual. You have to accept it. You have to see, what for, see it for what it is. Um, full responsibility for the, the team's form. Um, it's... it's when you walk into a job, it is, you know, you are the manager of that group of players, um, and there's a lot of side issues. I think we all know that, but that's no excuse for our results and our performances on the pitch. I think there's a whole lot more from what this group are capable of. Um, but everyone needs a little bit of time to implement what you really want out of a, a group of men, um, and I'm sure next season people will see that. Yeah. How big a deal is it to to try and get? a bit of positivity, whether it's hopefully this weekend or it's at least some point between now and the end of the season? Uh, it's, it's everything because as much as we've spoke about the plan and we've spoke about it, um, that is next and that's the end and that's still two and a half weeks away, um, which is a long time in football when you've got four games. Um, but football is what we're paid to do and, and we are in that business and you should never not look forward to a game of football. I think the day you don't look forward to a game of football is the day you, you hang up your boots or you stop managing or you stop wanting to be part of it because you know, we are in such a privileged position um, as men and in society where we get to do something we love. Um, so many kids grow up wanting to be a footballer and so few make it. And even when it's difficult, you have to find solace and strength in that um, and keep believing in, in yourself and keep believing that you'll be able to make a difference given time. Yeah, and that's, it can be easy to say sometimes. Do you have to sort of, remote, not motivate yourself, but, but get yourself up and, and like, okay, let, let's, let's be positive, let's enjoy this for what we can? Yeah, but the players generally do that. Now, obviously, in terms of where the group is, it's so disconnected at the moment, but there's still some I, I believe so much in. And I, I love coming into work to, to seeing them and to work with them. Obviously, the balance of for any managers to get that core group of the ones you want to keep investing in and then new ones on top of that and energy and athleticism and, and quality and skill levels across the board. Um, but there's still some people I really like to, to be around. Um, it just doesn't quite show on the pitch at the moment. And you know, trust is an incredible thing as a manager because you have to trust the players in order for your, your job security and safety and longevity. Um, and the longer it goes on, you either gain or lose a, a, a manager's trust. Um, and at the end of the season, I think a lot more things will become apparent in relation to that. But it's just getting through there, um, but getting through in a better position where we are right now. And hopefully the, the, the end of the season headline isn't our end to it in a negative way, it's in a positive way. Yeah. And we talk about sort of players losing confidence. Does that happen with, with coaches and managers as well? Do you, do you have to sort of say, no, this is what I believe in, I'm going to keep to, to this track? Yeah, you're constantly fighting yourself because um, the confidence and belief in the players' capabilities, even when they're not quite showing it, because at some stage they will show it and will come through a difficult moment and be better at those moments in the game. Um, but sometimes that's hard to do when those moments keep on going against you and people say, well, change the style and change the way you play. We've, we've not quite got the group 
to go to a totally different type of team. I don't think that's right for them. Um, and I think it will benefit us more next season to stick to our beliefs of the way we want to play football. So this weekend against a team that certainly needs results for you know, more important, more pressing reasons for them in terms of staying in the, uh, the division. What have you made of, uh, of Cheltenham? Well, they've, they've obviously been fighting so hard for a long period of time now. Um, and they're a fully and highly motivated team, always will be under, under Daryl. Um, and strong in their own patch. Um, but, you know, they've slightly shifted their shape on Tuesday night and then changed it again at half time. And, and probably watching that game, they were more comfortable in the second half shape. Um, but that, 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 that's not irrelevant. It's, it's who they are. I want to see who we are a little bit more this weekend. Um, and that's what I'm, I'm looking forward to. Um, looking forward to seeing some good people um, and hopefully a good game of football and a positive game of football and a good place to play football. Um, we're going to have to stand up to certain elements of the game. You go away from home, regardless of who you're playing, you're going to have to do that and manage our own emotion as much as the, the feel of the, the stadium um, and also attack.